let's solve a couple of questions on single slit diffraction where the slit width is changed for the first one we have a diffraction experiment where the slit is made smaller by a fifth and this causes a change in the diffraction pattern on the screen the question is to figure out what happens to the central maximum there is a note which says that assume that the central maximum casts a tiny angle on the slit and we have to choose two answers out of these four as always, why don't you pause the video and first give this a try. Alright, hopefully we have given this a shot. Now the question is asking us to think about what happens to the central maximum if the slit width is changed. So before we go into the options, before we see what angular width or size means, let's try and draw the setup. So here we have the screen and here we have the single slit. We can see that a distance between them is capital D and the slit width is A. Now the diffraction pattern on the screen because of the light waves interfering at different points, it, it looks like this. You have a central maximum with a great intensity and the intensity decreases as you go further away from the center. The question is asking us to think about central maximum. So let's just focus our attention on this, on this region of the interference pattern. And we need to think about angular width and size. We can think about size first. Size could be size could be just the width of this central maximum. It could be the width. So so it could be it could be this it could be this distance right here. The entire width of the central maximum. And the angular width is the angle that the central maximum makes on the slit. So wherever the central maximum is ending, whatever angle it makes on the slit, that would be the angular width. And that could look somewhat like this. This complete angle, this complete angle would be the angular width of the central maximum. And I've divided this into two as half of the central maximum is over here and half is over here. So these two angles are the same. But this total angle is the angular width of the central maximum. Since the angles are the same, we can call both of them as theta. Now in single slits, we know that the part difference a sine theta, a sine theta, the part difference between the waves coming out from the single slit this was equal to this was equal to m lambda for destructive interferences so wherever we have a minima the part difference is equal to m lambda an integral multiple of lambda so this condition is wherever a minima is formed and we can see that the first minima that would be the first order minima or m equal to 1 that would be a sin theta equal to equal to lambda so first minima is formed where the central maximum ends and theta over here is small because a note says that the central maximum is casting a tiny angle on the slit. So this entire angle is tiny. So the half of it will be tiny as well. We can approximate sine theta as theta. We can write this as a theta that is equal to lambda. And particularly for this point where the central maximum ends, where the first minima forms, this is the first order minima. So we can call this as theta one. This is also theta one and over here theta one theta one becomes equal to lambda by a now the angular width of the central maximum will be double of this it will be two theta one so when we write that when we write two theta one this becomes equal to two lambda by a this is the angular width of the central maximum and now we can see what is happening to the slit the slit is being made smaller by a fifth so this is a old we can say this is the original a the new a the new a becomes equal to a by 5 and we see what can that do to the angle of it this 5 will go up and it will be 10 lambda by a so what happens is your angle of it increases by five times it increases by five times we can now think about the size this entire this entire width of the central maximum for this we can take help of the triangles that are being formed over here can focus on this top right angle so the angle is theta 1 this angle is 90 and this side of the triangle is half of the total width so we can call that w later we can write 2w to figure out the total size we can write this as tan theta 1 equal to w w could be the side this side length w divided by capital d capital d is the is the base of this right angle triangle and tan theta 1 is sine theta 1 divided by cos theta 1 when theta 1 is small sine theta 1 can be approximated as theta 1 and cos theta 1 is just 1 because when theta 1 becomes really small tending towards 0 let's say cos 0 is 1 so we approximate cos theta 1 as 1 for smaller angles 
now let me let me write this let me write this over here this becomes theta 1 equal to w by d and w is just one half so we can write we can write 2w that is the size of the central maximum so this is 2d theta 1 and in place of theta 1 we can write lambda by a so this becomes 2 lambda d by a and now again when these when the slit is made smaller by a fifth this a this a the new a the new a becomes a by 5 a by 5 and again this 5 goes to the top gets multiplied by 2 and the width just increases by 5 times you have this 5 going to the numerator so the size the size increases by 5 times all right now let's go to the next question here we have the width of the slit being tripled in size and we can see how the size changes what happens to the intensity of the central maximum we need to choose one answer out of these five again pause the video and give this a try all right so over here we need to think about intensity of the central maximum and when we try to recall the intensity of a wave we can say that intensity intensity was always proportional to the square of the square of the amplitude and we can think of we can think of the slit we can think of this slit as being made up of let's say n n secondary n number of secondary sources so you have the primary source which is sending all these light waves and then when it passes through the slit you have all these secondary sources which act as individual sources creating their own waves and that results in an interference and you see the pattern on the screen this is what Huygens principle said all of these points act as secondary sources creating the pattern so if there are n number of such sources let's say there are n number of such sources and each source creates a wave with an amplitude of we can say the amplitude is a with an amplitude of a then the amplitude at the central maximum the amplitude at at the central maximum will be the sum of all of the amplitudes produced by each of these sources that is what central maximum is this is a constructive interference all of the sources are interfering constructively so the total amplitude at the central maximum that would be that would be n into a so this is this is the amplitude intensity we can say is proportional to n a square n a whole square now the width is being tripled so now there are three n sources and each source produces a wave of amplitude a so the total amplitude of the central maximum that would be 3 3 n a and now the intensity now the intensity is proportional to 3 n a whole square when we take 3 outside this becomes 9 n a whole square so we see that the intensity has increased 9 times and that makes this that makes this option b all right you can try more exercises from this lesson and if you are watching on youtube do check out the exercise link in the description